A minute and a half left to go until touchdown. We still don't have video from the landing site at this point, so we'll be waiting on confirmations from the team on the ground. We'll pass those on as soon as we do hear them. And uh, if we are able to get video in the meantime, we will definitely uh, put that out as well. We're just a little over a minute to go now. And there is the video we've been waiting on. So he is under its parachute, making its way down for today's landing. That should be coming up very soon at this point. Just before landing, Evanition will get a notice from the computers to prepare to fire six solid propellant engines called the soft landing engines and slow the Soyuz down to five feet per second or about 3.5 miles per hour. And you can see Soyuz has now touched down in Kazakhstan, 9.54 p.m. Central Time. After 196 days in space, 3,136 orbits, and 83 million miles, Chris Cassidy, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Ivan Bogner are home. Again, that landing coming at 9.54 p.m. Central Time, just a smidge early. Crew now safely on the ground. 9.54 p.m. Central Time was the, the landing point. Uh, that wraps up Chris Cassidy's third trip to space and his second long-duration mission. He spent 15 days in space during STS-127 in July of 2009 and another 166 days during Expedition 25 in 2013. With 196 days, he added on with this trip. Cassidy now has a cumulative t cumulative total of 378 days spent in space, earning him the fifth spot on the list of most time spent in space by an American. He also added four spacewalks to his previous six, and with a total of 10, is now tied for most spacewalks by a NASA astronaut and ninth for all astronauts. He has spent a total of 54 hours and 51 minutes spacewalking over the course of his three space flights. Anatoly Ivanishin also had two previous days in space, and uh, they were both long-duration missions, so he is coming home with a total of 476 days in space, enough to earn him the 25th place on the all-time list of time spent in space. And this flight was a first for Ivan Wagner, his first trip to space, so he has racked up a total of 196 days on this mission. Again, the crew landed safely in Kazakhstan at 9.54 p.m. Central Time. Saw them touch down here on the step of Kazakhstan. Landing crews now will be moving in and uh, making way to meet the crew, help them out of the capsule and then eventually uh, into the medical tents where they'll go through some uh, preliminary uh, tests and procedures and then get on uh, helicopters to take them back to planes that will take them home. You can see some of the helicopters beginning to make their way to the landing site now. Total of eight MI-8 helicopters with television equipment and, inflatable, and that inflatable medical tent, as well as a number of NASA representatives on their way.
Once again, the Soyuz MS-16 didn't touch down at 9.54 p.m. Central Time. That's 8.54 a.m. in Kazakhstan, where it uh, landed. You can see the uh, recovery team making its way to the uh, uh, to the landing spot. Uh, they'll begin uh, landing and uh, moving in to meet the crew, help them out of the capsule in the next few minutes. Once they do, hopefully we'll be able to get some video from the landing site. Again, there's a total of about eight of those helicopters that are moving in towards the landing site with a number of uh, NASA and Roscosmos representatives on board to help with various aspects of the landing procedures. Once they do arrive, a portable medical tent will be set up near the capsule where the crew will be able to change out of their launch and entry suits. And then Russian technicians will open the Soyuz hatch and help the crew members out. Since they've been living in zero gravity for the past 196 days, they'll be feeling the effects of being back, back on the Earth's surface. And so they'll be seated in special reclining chairs near the capsule for some medical tests. As soon as those have wrapped up and the crew is ready to go, they'll be helped into helicopters for a flight back to a staging site in Jeskis Khan before boarding their planes and coming home to Houston or Moscow as appropriate.
So he's in a 16 and it's three crew members have been on the ground for about 10 minutes now. Currently seeing a view of uh, the steppe Kazakhstan uh, in the early morning, southeast of Jeskis Gun. Can't really make it out here, but uh, just just beyond what we can see, the Soyuz did touch down at 9.54 p.m. Central Time. That's 8.54 in the morning, local time. And the Soyuz, uh, the uh, landing team has been uh, steadily moving in. We saw many of the helicopters land, and so uh, they should be setting up around the Soyuz, getting ready to help the crew members out. And hopefully among them, a videographer that uh, will be able to send us some video back of the crew as they get out of the Soyuz. As soon as we are able to, to get that, we'll, we'll, we'll get you that view as well. There are a few, um, a few fewer people who, than normal out at the landing site today with uh, the various uh, quarantine related restrictions due to COVID that does uh, cut down on the number of people we send out. Um, among the people who are there, we have uh, the Deputy Chief Astronaut Reed Wiseman and Flight Surgeon Joe Schmidt uh, some of the people who are normally there who are not include uh, the NASA photographer Bill Ingalls and uh, NASA Public Affairs spokesperson uh, Rob Navius. They weren't able to make it out to the landing site, although Navius is in uh, Kazakhstan and may be able to give us a, a little bit of an update uh, later. He won't be on site with the crew at this point. Uh, he will be waiting for them and Jessica's gone. But hopefully we will still be able to get some video as, uh, as the team gets set up there at the landing site. Again, they touch down at 9.54 p.m. Central Time. Commander Chris Cassidy of Expedition 63 and Flight Engineers Anatoly Ivanishin and Yvonne Wagner. Teams here on the ground are getting reports from the uh, the team members at the landing site that uh, the Soyuz MS-16 did land vertically. It can, uh, of course, also land safely on its side, but in this case, it landed upright. Uh, that will help the crew uh, members get out in the normal fashion. And they also uh, passed on that the crew is doing well, feeling good, and everything is looking nominal at that landing site.
We've been taking uh, questions over the course of the night from uh, social media using the hashtag AskNASA, and you can send in your own question if you'd like. We'll try and get a few more of them answered before we wrap up our coverage. Uh, while we are waiting for a closer view of the crew, we'll answer a couple of that have come in, in the last few minutes. First one coming from IDK, who is asking, why is there a communication blackout during the descent? Um, that is, communication on this uh, particular mission was a little worse than usual. We didn't have uh, very good audio for, for a good part of the descent, but uh, in general, that is because um, when the when the Soyuz is going through the plasma period, where the uh, uh, it's beginning to experience the Earth's atmosphere again and uh, the capsule begins to heat up and the air around it begins to heat up, uh, that can cause the communication blackout um, as it uh, engulfs the capsule. So that is uh, kind of an expected part of the trip home for Soyuz or, or really most capsules. Um, but again, this in this particular case, uh, the audio and communication was a little a little rougher even than we normally expect. And we also have a question from Victoria asking what type of prep do the astronauts do before they suit up and get ready to head out? Uh, and that I assume is for launch. They um, do get uh, to have a good breakfast before they suit up and and uh, then once they do head out to the launch site, they are able to um, do some once they have suited up, rather, they do some leak checks and and every and things like that before they get to one final uh, salute to the uh, ground teams who prepare them and uh, also um, are able to uh, to get onto their vehicle and into the capsule for launch. All right, another question coming in from social media. Again, send your own questions in using the hashtag AskNASA. This one coming from Maggie and asking, will the astronauts be able to see their families right away, or do they have to be in quarantine for a period of time? Um, the astronauts, uh, they'll all be returning to their home bases, basically, uh, for Chris Cassidy, that is NASA, and he will be able to see at least some of his family members who have been uh, in quarantine themselves so that they can have access to him right away. Uh, people who haven't been able to quarantine for uh, various reasons would need to spend a little bit of extra time away from the astronauts coming home to make sure that they um, don't expose them to any uh, 
any illnesses or germs while they are in um, a state that we would consider immunocompromised. Um, having been on the space station where they don't have exposure to germs on a on uh, on a regular basis like we do here on the ground, um, we want to be sure that once they are back on Earth and, and start to experience that again, that uh, they are eased back into that situation carefully. Again, you can send in your own uh, questions for us using the hashtag AskNASA. Hopefully we'll get a chance to answer a few more before the night's over. And it's now been about 20 minutes since the Soyuz MS-16 touched down in Kazakhstan. Uh, although we can't quite see them in this view, we can see the area that they landed in and hopefully we'll get a closer view before before too long. Uh, we have gotten reports from the teams that uh, met them there on the ground that the capsule landed upright and that the crew on board is feeling good and doing well. As I mentioned earlier, uh, public affairs specialist Rob Navius is in uh, Kazakhstan, although he's not able to be at the landing site for this uh, for this particular landing. We do have him on the phone, though, to give us a report from what he is hearing uh, there in Jeskaskan. Rob, can you hear us? Hi, Brandy, and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, we're actually in Karaganda at the airport. I am aboard the NASA Gulfstream jet, preparing to take off for a short flight to the forward staging city of Jezkazgan, where other NASA personnel and uh, search and recovery forces belonging to the Russian uh, Rosaviatsa search and recovery team deployed from in helicopters to the landing site a few hours ago. We will be airborne very shortly for that brief flight to Jezkazgan. There is a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft that is parked right next to us. It, too, will be airborne for Jezkazgan, where we will meet the crew. This is going to be a quick and dirty recovery operation of the crew members today. The Russians have elected to scale down the usual uh, hoopla that surrounds the return of crew members due to COVID uh, uh, cautionary procedures that uh, they are operating under with everybody wearing masks, maintaining uh, as much social distancing as possible. Uh, what will happen is uh, Cassidy, Ivanishin, and Wagner will emerge uh, uh, from the Soyuz MS-16. They'll be loaded into individual helicopters after medical tests in a nearby erected medical tent, and then they'll be flown uh, to uh, from uh, the landing site to Jezkazgan, about a 40-minute helicopter flight that will facilitate and hasten their ability to get on these respective planes, Cassidy on the NASA plane, uh, Ivanishin and Wagner on the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft fly back to their respective homes. We'll be uh, flying back, of course, to Houston. They will be flying back to Star City uh, to the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center outside of Moscow. Everything has gone extremely smoothly. The uh, NASA team uh, deployed yesterday with other Russian uh, search and recovery officials for an overnight, a quick overnight in Jezkazgan which has been a familiar landing uh, staging city. Uh, Jezkazgan uh, lies to the southwest of Karaganda, which is where everybody had gathered earlier in the week for landing team briefings and other preparations. Brandy? Brandy? Hey, thanks, Rob. We appreciate that. And it looks like uh, in, uh, in Moscow, the flight control team there is beginning to get some video from the actual landing site. We just saw Chris Cassidy being uh, helped out of the Soyuz capsule and onto the to the uh, the tarp where he and the other crew members will be gathering over the next few minutes. Uh, we'll try and get this uh, video for you directly as well. But uh, but that was great to see him uh, see him emerging from the capsule. Um, Rob, I know that this is a little bit different from you, for you. Um, what kind of uh, information are you able to to get there? Uh, we're getting uh, we're getting information as it uh, becomes available on a moment by moment basis. Uh, no problem getting information from the landing site through a variety of sources. Uh, and uh, we uh, heard uh, the descent of the uh, Soyuz under its chutes all the way down to touchdown. Uh, just about the same time we arrived at the airport uh, for uh, boarding uh, the NASA plane to head down to Jezkazgan. So. Uh, it's basically the uh, astronauts coming to meet us in Jezkazgan. 
with Cassidy uh, uh, climbing aboard the G5. There will be a, a pair of uh, NASA flight surgeons attending to him on the flight all the way back to Houston with one refueling stop, and uh, we should be back in Houston on Thursday evening uh, Central Time. That'll be a long trip, but I'm sure it'll be good for him to be home. We're getting a little bit more video uh, now as uh, the crew continues to be extracted. Now seeing Yvonne Wagner, this again coming from uh, Roscosmos. Uh, looks like we've got two of the three crew members out now, and we'll keep watching for uh, Anatoly Venetian, who should be up next. You can see a few of the NASA personnel who are gathered out at the landing site. Uh, all of these... Uh, Groups will be making their way back to uh, Rob Navius in uh, uh, meeting them, and, and Jessica's gone, as he mentioned a moment ago. And there is an Antoli Ebonition as well out of the capsule. All the crew members looking good. As you can see, as uh, as Rob mentioned, all the people who are meeting them there wearing masks to help protect them, an additional layer of protection, and uh, beyond uh, the quarantine that uh, these these uh, members of the landing team would have gone through as well. Rob, if you're still there, I, I, I don't know um, what it is for you in Karaganda, but it looks like the weather's pretty pleasant for the team at the landing site. Yeah, the landing time temperature, Brandy, was about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. A cold front moved through this region uh, late yesterday and overnight and passed uh, just to the east of the landing zone just in time for touchdown. It is cloudy here in Tarragonda, uh, but uh, we're in Jezka's gone where we're headed here a short time from now. Uh, the sun should be out. The landing occurring one hour and three minutes after sunrise. And uh, as we speak, uh, the pilots, the NASA pilots out of Wellington Field nearby the Johnson Space Center are revving up the engines to this NASA Gulfstream jet, and we'll be taking off a short time from now. It's looking like the crew members might be moving into the medical tent before too long as well. We just saw the uh, landing team there uh, it, pausing for a, a group photo. Again, everybody looking really good for having just spent 196 days in space. Though we didn't get uh, video of uh, the landing itself, we did get reports, and you can just make it out there in the background uh, behind the crowd. The the Soyuz did land upright, and uh, we're able to get confirmation from the teams who met them that uh, the crew was feeling well. Now we're able to see that for ourselves. Everybody looking like they are uh, they are feeling good and should be able to to move on to the medical tent before too long. Rob, do you know if uh, Cassidy has made any special requests for food that uh, the team members might have ready for him on the plane? That's a great question, Brandy. And actually, in true SEAL fashion, he made no request. He said whatever was on board uh, would be just fine. As I, as I mentioned, we will have one refueling stop on route to Houston in which there'll be some catering of food uh, for the passengers on board, including Cassidy. I think he's just happy to be home after 196 days in space. Seeing uh, Anatoly even mission right now, but yes, all the crew members are looking pretty happy to be home. Team members still uh, 
unloading some of the limited cargo that the Soyuz is able to carry as well. And Evanition there being the first to move off towards the medical tent. This again is a tent that is uh, brought uh, with the team that meets the Soyuz at the landing site so that they can get into a protected area to uh, change out of their Sokol spacesuits and uh, go through a few uh, preliminary tests before they then will get on the helicopters for that 40 minute ride that Rob mentioned back to Jessica's gone where they'll be met by planes to take them back to their various homes. Evanition and Wagner both on their way now to the medical tent. You can see what that tent looks like in this view. Chris Cassidy looks like uh, making a, a phone call back to home and now on his way to the tent as well. Crew members are uh, are carried in the chairs just to be extra safe and prevent any possibility of a, a trip as they are experiencing gravity again for the first time in 196 days. So there, the crew members uh, making their way into the medical tent. That is the last that we'll see of them tonight. Uh, once again, today's landing wraps up a 196 day stay in space for the members of the Expedition 63 crew. With that 196 days added to his total, Chris Cassidy has now spent 378 days in space over the course of three missions. That puts him number at number five on the list of time spent in space for U.S. astronauts. Anatoly Ivanish, meanwhile, uh, also having made three journeys to space now, now has a total of 476 days in space, landing him a spot on uh, the all-time uh, list at uh, at the 25th place, and Ivan Wagner uh, just completing his first space flight now with 196 days on his total.
with the crew safely in the medical tent and going undergoing the final preparations before they get on their helicopters. That are the first uh, leg of their journey back to their homes. Uh, we are ready to wrap up our coverage for the night. We uh, have the crew again safely landing in Kazakhstan at 9.54 p.m. Central Time today. That's 8.54 a.m. in Kazakhstan. And uh, now they will begin making their way back to Moscow and in the case of Chris Cassidy, Houston. It's been a uh, momentous night of, uh, of coverage with uh, the hatch closure and uh, undocking, deorbit, and landing. So we will be replaying, recapping all of that for you in a video file that will be airing at 1 a.m. Central Time here on NASA TV. So if you haven't gotten enough yet, you can take a look at that a little later tonight. And with that, we are going to wrap up our coverage of the Expedition 63 Landing in Kazakhstan. Again, Chris Cassidy, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Ivan Wagner now safely home after 196 days in space. Thanks so much for joining us. This is Mission Control Houston.